Good evening. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for, uh, for joining us this evening here at the Hopkins Academy uh, for our initial public information meeting on a project that MassDOT is undertaking for the improvement of the Route 9 corridor here in Hadley and, as you'll learn this evening, uh, and beyond. Um, <clears throat> Nick, do you have a... Uh, oh, remote's right here. There we go. Okay. Um, so, um, tonight we're going to talk, uh, introduce you guys to uh, myself. I'm the, the uh, my name's Michael Trepanier. I'm the project manager uh, for this uh, effort, uh, working at the Highway Division in MassDOT. And uh, in a moment, we're going to take a moment to introduce you to the uh, consultant team that we have, I have here with me this evening. Um, and then we're going to talk about what's been done on the corridor, um, the previous planning uh, work that's been done for Route 9, and where we are now, where we're going to go, uh, what we plan on doing, and uh, what the project will uh, talk about some of the existing conditions on Route 9, and then talk about uh, our, our uh, anticipated goals and outcomes. And then a uh, quick discussion of uh, our public outreach program. And, um, and finally, uh, next steps and sort of a broad uh, schedule for uh, implementing uh, our project and then have an open discussion. Really, we wanted to limit the amount of time we talked at you guys and have much more time to, uh, to listen. Tonight, I really just wanted to have a moment to introduce uh, the project and, um, and the big scheme, the big picture, the mile high perspective of what MassDOT wants to accomplish here, but also start to get uh, some more input from, from local community members about what uh, are the priorities for Hadley and for our other key stakeholders in the region. So with that, uh, I'll just overview, give an overview of, of what's involved here. So Route 9 is, is a state highway that MassDOT has jurisdiction over. Um, and so we are responsible for operating the roadway, maintaining the roadway, and, uh, and any improvements, capital improvements that would be uh, constructed there. That, of course, would be in partnership with, uh, with our regional uh, um, authority, uh, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, who administers and programs federal aid for the region. And then I'm joined here tonight with uh, team members from Greenman Peterson. They're responsible for the planning and uh, design and engineering services for the project. And, uh, and uh, another uh, staff member from Howard Stein Hudson. So I'm going to just take a pause and give them a chance to introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. Um, I need to, I need to yeah, use the mic. Sure. Good evening. My name is Nick Gross. Um, as Michael said, I'm with a company called Howard Stein Hudson. Um, just like to thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, we're looking very forward to starting this process with you. Um, I am a UMass alum and a former resident of Route 9 in Amherst, so I know this area quite well. Um, I will mostly be uh, contributing to the team doing public involvement and um, some preliminary planning for bicycle uh, accommodations once we get to that point. So um, again, thank you all for coming out. and. Uh, Please be in touch and sign in if you did not sign in. So, thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is uh, John Osorio. I am the project manager for Greenman Peterson. Uh, I will also be serving as the uh, lead civil engineer for, for the uh, Route 9 improvements in Hadley. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to uh, getting to know the community a little bit better and, and hearing what you have to say about the issues out there. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jason DeGray. I am also a project manager at uh, GPI. My role will be to, to see this project through the early project development stage, to really conceptualize what it is we're seeking to accomplish here, and uh, work it through the consensus building process with all the stakeholders to ensure you know, we're on target here and uh, delivering a project that everyone uh, can see the value in. Uh, I'm also a uh, born and raised in the Valley, so yeah, this is home for me. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Carolyn Radish and I am a transportation and um, urban planner with Greenman Peterson. And I'm looking forward to working with the communities on the Route 9 corridor to build a really great project. And I'm excited to be here at this kickoff meeting. So thank you for your time. Okay, 
great. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, hopefully over the next few years, uh, we'll all become pretty familiar faces for everybody, and I wanted to just take a moment to introduce ourselves later on this evening. You'll, we'll give you guys a chance to do the same when you have any questions or comments for us. Um, so I want to take a moment to talk about what's been done. A lot of work uh, has, has been completed on the Route 9 corridor over the last uh, decade or so. And a lot of that was the result of the 2004 Connecticut River Crossing study that went from um, <clears throat> Holyoke to Sunderland and really the entire uh, region, looking at how to effectively improve mobility with a focus on uh, a potential new crossing uh, over the Connecticut River. Ultimately, that crossing was found to be not terribly prudent because the benefits of, of a new bridge crossing over the Connecticut uh, was very much outweighed by the social and environmental impacts associated with it. So that was really dismissed, but there were a couple of key recommendations that came out of it from a very preliminary low level of analysis. One was provide a consistent four lane cross section for Route 9. Now in some areas of Route 9, as many of you, I'm sure, as all of you probably know, uh, some of that has been implemented, most notably at the bridge crossing, the, the Coolidge Bridge Crossing at near the I-91 interchange, and some other things that uh, have occurred um, incrementally through the corridor. What we're, what we're looking at now is, is trying to finalize those, that implement, finally implement those recommendations in a more comprehensive approach. Uh, also, um, okay, sorry, I, 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 skip, I skipped ahead from my slides. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> one of the other uh, recommendations there was to improve the uh, transit service um, uh, for the B43 line that connects the UMass and Amherst Town Center to the Northampton Center, uh, cutting across uh, Hadley, most notably via the Hampshire Mall. Uh, and the recommendation was to move that service towards what we call a hybrid bus rapid transit service, something that resembles bus rapid transit that in other cities across the globe is a dedicated uh, facility where the, there's a, a dedicated lane for a bus but borrow from some of those the technological solutions uh, in that approach by uh, implementing things like uh, signal preemption and when a bus approaches a, an intersection uh, it, it gives green time for that bus trying to get get through the intersection and uh, queue bypass lanes that's a uh, a fancy word for a, a very short dedicated space for buses at intersections um, and improve stops that resemble more, uh, that are, are, are better and more pedestrian, from, or more rider friendly with shelters and, and safer zones for the buses to pull off or pull on or, or whatever that, that solution may be. And of course also uh, at the time in 2004 these weren't terribly common, uh, but nowadays most of us, a lot of us have smartphones in our pockets that we can very easily develop apps for, provide real-time data, and, uh, and improve traveler information systems, not only in the form of you know, your personal device, but also at, at the stops, and, and have a better sense of uh, reliability and consistency for, for the ridership. Uh, and then in 2014, uh, the um, PBTA, uh, the Pioneer Valley Transit Authority, conducted a comprehensive service analysis of all their bus routes and one of the key findings for the B43 uh, was that it would benefit significantly and has, has just, amount, just the right amount of ridership, as in large ridership, um, that would support a, a bus rapid transit-like approach or light uh, approach. Uh, especially because we know the, the, the width of Route 9 is currently constrained and even in the future uh, a widened scenario would still be constrained. We've got a lot of vehicles moving through there. There's a lot of things that we can do to improve uh, that transit service. We're going to talk a little bit more about that this evening. So right now, just to give everybody a, a solid orientation of, of what we're talking about, there's three major, major uh, modal connections regionally between Amherst and Northampton and, and within Hadley. And those, of course, are Route 9, uh, being the most major vehicular connection and transit connection, and then a, and the very celebrated and beloved Norwatic Rail Trail. Thank you, Mastop District 2, for uh, the rehabilitation out there. We've uh, heard a lot of good things about what was done, especially at the tunnel, eliminating some of that the safety hazard there. And, uh, and then, of course, um, the B43. That is making that major non-vehicular modal connection between the two centers. 
um, <clears throat> the two anchor centers, but of course there's a lot of a lot of ridership that's that's destined to the to the commercial center here in Hadley. So clearly we, we recognize that this one lone portion of, of Route 9 between uh, Middle Street and South Maple Street, well I guess up to the approach to the South Maple, the Maple Street, South Maple Street intersection is that bottleneck section where we lose the four lanes of cross section and we get back down to two lanes and it ultimately induces a lot of congestion. Um, and <clears throat> there's a number of other issues. The East Street signal clearly has some movements going on there, some left turns, right turns that aren't being fully accommodated with dedicated lane space, and there's a lot of problems to solve. Uh, we have that congestion issue. We have the, the fact that, the, that Route 9 serves that regional connection and, and serves for the economic and commercial um, uses along the corridor itself here in Hadley. Uh, that there's uh, issues with intersection safety. We have a number of locations in the corridor. We have crash clusters uh, where there's a, a high incidence of, uh, of crashes that have been recorded and uh, a lack of accessibility, uh, a lack of pedestrian and bicycle accommodation on the corridor. A lot of times folks tell us in, in situations like this where you have a major roadway connecting uh, two destination points that, oh, well, there's already a bike path. Um, and we, we really feel like that's great for everyone going the distance, but everyone making those shorter trips within Hadley on Route 9 are not really well served by the, the Nowatic bike, bike path. And there are really great connections between the Norwatic and Route 9 and Maple Street, South Maple Street really, uh, that get people, feed people off of the, the rail trail. And there's, there's a lot of things that we can do to improve that situation. So. Here's just some photos. I'm sure some of these some of this, these conditions are very familiar for most of you. You have congestion in the bottleneck. You have a lack of sidewalk. This, uh, I didn't get I didn't get a waiver from this guy, so hopefully he's not in the audience tonight. But uh, you know we've got goat paths forming along the edge because it's it's unsafe to walk down that very narrow no shoulder here and narrow shoulder here. Um, and, uh, and you know, you see that reflected in a number of areas in the corridor. So let's talk about our goals. You know, clearly, first off, we want to improve safety and relieve congestion. And in order to do this, we want to take a two-tier approach. First is addressing the bottleneck and widening Route 9. And right now, what that looks like, we're not really sure. You know, there's a, a number of alternatives we're, we're going we're gonna to address, and I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, but we want to improve Route 9, but not diminish the character of Hadley. And we, you know, through our experience working on the other projects that have dotted uh, Route 9 from Northampton all the way to Middle Street, we've heard a lot about the agrarian heritage here, and that that is important to preserve, especially here in the town, in the town center. And that's something we're very sensitive to. Uh, we want to in, improve accessibility for our, uh, our, our, our less able-bodied users, folks who, who need who need uh, special accommodations in the form of curb ramps and accessible uh, um, uh, features at, at intersections for uh, to be able to cross safely. Uh, we want to improve um, the overall character, the overall condition of the roadway, and rehabilitate pavement and improve the drainage and stormwater systems to improve water quality uh, for all of those receiving waters that that our road is draining to, and conduct a long-term uh, transit mobility study that is the second tier to our approach. So in the, in the medium term, our five-year plan is to increase the, the, the throughput for vehicles. But really, the long-term plan is to in increase the person throughput so that not only do we improve the, the ability for vehicles to pass, but, we improve that, but also included in that is the ability for bus vehicles to pass. So we're going to conduct a, uh, an alternatives analysis and, and transit study to look at different ways to, to improve uh, the B43 service so that it maybe becomes a more desirable uh, route than taking a personal vehicle. So we're going to take that two-tiered approach. We'll, we'll comprehensively reconstruct Route 9 to be a more multimodal facility. It will have, uh, it'll have that cross-sectional width to accommodate the vehicle throughput, and we, you know, we've identified a couple different sections where we think that that character is, it's important to, to be uh, aware of the context. Most notably, um, 
from the Middle Street intersection, which you will start seeing improvements on in, in the near, I think, next construction season. Uh, MassDOT will be uh, reconstructing Middle Street essentially in, in, in the near approach to that, but then beyond those improvements, uh, we'll be mimicking some of the, the, the things that we're doing there throughout the entire corridor. Uh, widening Route 9, whether it's three lanes or four lanes, and you know, those are sort of some of the details we're starting to, we're, we're starting to flesh out and, 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 uh, and look at and analyze. And then beyond, uh, essentially, the Lowe's site drive, where the Lowe's driveway comes out, we recognize that that's a pretty significant change in context. It really becomes that commercial center, a retail center, where the, the cross-section is, is pretty, we, we anticipate pretty much matching what's out there, but um, getting a lot more out of the, the multimodal uh, effects of adding sidewalks and new accommodations or safe accommodations for bicyclists on the roadway or maybe off the roadway in a protected, separated fashion. And of course, everything that we do within that stretch from Middle Street to Maple Street would incorporate any of the uh, recommendations from our transit study. So things like what I was talking about before, the, the queue jump lanes, maybe some dedicated space, better uh, areas for uh, bus stops, uh, safer areas for bus stops, things that accommodate riders in a more comfortable way, uh, and incorporating some of that travel time, uh, travel information systems, all of that is part of this piece of, of our medium-term plan. Um, you know, like I said, we're, we're going to establish through a community process. This is the very first, the first, the very first milestone in that process where we develop alternatives. We bring them back to this community. We talk about it with. Uh, we've established a, a key stakeholder group that we've met with once. Um, you can read details about that uh, on our website. Uh, we have minutes from that meeting where we've invited local officials. We've been meeting with elected officials. And, uh, and other key stakeholders like uh, folks at UMass and at PBTA and PBPC that are informing our, our, our not decision making yet because there's been no decisions, but it, it, where, you know, where we go in terms of how to, how to get to a point of decision making and, uh, and, and conduct that study and come up with alternatives for the B43 to significantly, hopefully, we think we can, we have an opportunity to significantly improve uh, that, that service that PBTA offers. And uh, I've gone through all that. So our next steps, we conduct that study. It's really the key, we think, to informing uh, what happens on the ground in terms of the, the physical construct reconstruction of Route 9. Um, we develop those alternatives as after that, the outcome after we've completed the study. And we have ongoing coordination with our key stakeholders and punctuated with moments like this where we're here doing uh, large public information meetings. There may be opportunities for design charrettes or, or things like that where we're actually working, working more collaboratively and one-on-one -on -one with folks rather than the big traditional uh, public meeting forum. Uh, so this is uh, essentially where we're at. We've initiated the project. We've done, we started doing our homework. We're getting you know, some of the key issues out on the table and we want to discuss that. Uh, we'll do the transit alternatives, the transit study and, uh, and, and come up with some findings and eventually take that to a preferred alternative that is uh, supported through uh, and reviewed in the state uh, environmental review process. And then we get into design. That's, that's, where, uh, that's where John comes in. That's where his fun starts. But in the meantime, uh, you know, we won't be doing any real hard engineering uh, for some time until, until we have a preferred alternative that we have you know, gained some reasonable consensus on. So, and then, we, we build, we build the thing. And that, that may seem like a long way off for, for some of you in the audience. Five years sounds like a long time. In the world of transportation, that's, that's, a, that's a heartbeat. So, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll keep you informed with our project website. Uh, this presentation will be up there. I, you know, I know we, uh, we have the um, privilege of being televised on local, local access TV and, um, uh, you know, minute, minutes from this meeting will be posted. So folks can, folks can, Follow along with us, even if you're not able to attend a meeting and you want to know what's what's new. Uh, we'll have that information on our on our website. And of course, if you uh, want to get in touch with us one on one, this is my contact information. Again, this will be uh, posted with the, the presentation. Um, and if you want to get on our distribution list for notifications uh, of meetings like this, you can contact Nick, and he'll uh, he'll throw you in our database. So. 
tried to keep that as quick, short as I could, so we had a lot of time to have a dialogue with you guys. And um, for the sake of uh, recording and everybody who's listening along, if you have comments or questions or things you want to talk to us about, feel free to stand up at the microphone we have set up in the middle of the room and, and we can uh, hear from you guys. Don't be shy. I know someone, someone's got something burning on their mind, right? Okay, and for the sake of the, for the record, uh, could you just start by uh, stating your name and that way we can just get you in our minutes and um, you know, know who you are. Hi, I'm Andy Morris Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street, here in Hadley. I always go first at, the, at these meetings. Thank you, thank you, because someone's got to. Um, yeah, I'm on the neurotic... Well, I, I think I went first, but... Right, right. Uh, I meant to the, you know, civilians, the real people who, li who live here. Okay. Um, I'm on the Neurotic Rail Trail Advisory Committee, um, so I'm interested in two particular things around um, biking. One is that the rail trails stay open during the construction, uh, particularly the tunnel under Route 9 uh, not be closed, that severs the entire artery, and also the possibility of bike lanes and bicycle boxes at the Maple Street intersection, which many riders use to access the trail, um, and a possible bike lane between South, no, North Maple and the bike trail. Mm -hmm that runs between the two malls. That's a pretty uh, hairy intersection to ride your bike in. So do you, do you have any plans or you're just asking us for? Well, no, I mean, we don't, have, we don't actually have a plan yet, but I, I, will, I will say we, we've noted that connection as being very poor from the Norwalk uh, to along Maple to Route 9. And uh, that not only improving the crossing of the Norwalk on, on Maple Street, but also improving the connection to the reconstructed Route 9 is, is, a, is a key priority for us. Okay, well, I'd love to talk to you about it later. I just don't want to hog up the whole sure. meeting. Sure, and, and in terms of the overall approach for bicycle accommodation on Route 9, uh, there's a whole suite of alternatives for how, how we, we put bikes on roadways or near roadways, and all of those are on the table right now. You know, a lot of, there's a lot of buzz across the country about separated facilities, and oh, that's better. Uh, about separated facilities and um, you know what were once not so recent not for not terribly long uh, facilities called cycle tracks or you know separated multi-use paths those are all all of those alternatives are on the table thank you Michael Klamoski Tana Hadley DPW I'd just like to thank the mass DOT for the help that they're giving the town of Hadley especially with our infrastructure and especially with our aging water lines We've struggled with this for years, and now that you're going to be rebuilding this section of roadway, we can take advantage of it with not having to pay and having to pave the road while you guys are doing the work. So I think it's going to be a tremendous asset to the town. I believe we're going to save probably within fifty to eighty thousand dollars if we had to do it ourselves through this section. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. We look we, we enjoy working with you guys too. Good evening, uh, David Tudrin. I'm the chairperson of the Hadley Municipal Buildings Committee. Uh, I'd like to thank you today, tonight for this presentation. Um, along the, the uh, way of our committee uh, communicating with MassDOT over the project, we've learned about the widening, the potential widening of Route 9 at the Middle Street intersection next to the library and the town hall. And I think at, at one point that portion of the project was to be advanced beyond your study or before your study. Could you get into a little bit about the specifics relative to when that 2.25 mile work is going to occur? How soon? So right now it's, it's a little unclear um, because there's a, a bit of uncertainty in, you know, we know what we need to do. Uh, you know, we need to develop alternatives. We need to just, we need to bring those alternatives out, uh, not only bef with the community and our key stakeholders, but also bring those through an uh, environmental review process. In general, I can come up with some really good guesses about how long that takes, you know, uh, about a year for us to get through our, 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 our transit and uh, Route 9 alternatives analysis, and maybe another year or two in some cases to get through that state environmental review process. There is also some uncertainty associated with uh, the federal environmental review process, although I have some, some level of confidence until very recently the, 
the Federal Highway Administration wouldn't be interested in having a conversation with us because of the nature of how long-range planning occurs and their uh, their conservatism in, in terms of their resources and where they allocate their resources and attention. So that's a little bit unknown. There's some uncertainty and risk associated with that timeline, but um, in general, um, our, our goal is to have, you know, working with uh, PVPC in programming the, tra the Regional Transportation Improvement Plan, allocating those federal resources and, and prioritizing where, you know, where what our recommendations, the recommendations of our study, you know, prioritizing that based on the funding that's available. So, you know, right now we're shooting for uh, this being, we're, we're putting this in, in a five-year box. Uh, but that is, I, I have to, you know, just with the, with the caveat that that's subject to change and it could, in, it could improve in terms of timing and, and some, we could start to see some uh, improvements sooner than that. Um, but <clears throat> in general, I, I, I think that that's a, a, a good, safe expectation to set for everyone. Okay. I just had one follow-up uh, comment and maybe one more question. Uh, relative to our uh, town's buildings, which as you know in the center of town are very close to Route 9, as, as it's widened they've gotten closer um, and they're very delicate structures and yes. uh, our committee's uh, written to MassDOT to uh, just express our concerns over uh, the construction work and, and how those uh, structures would be monitored properly so that they'd be preserved, there wouldn't be any issues with settlement during during construction time. So right. I just want to go on record as, as that. And and also I think at, at one point the scuttlebutt on, on the BRT proposal was to actually, some someone had indicated that it was perhaps even widening for a dedicated BRT along Route 9. But I think I take from your comments that there's ways to do BRT light where we are doing signalization which uh, uh, permits uh, buses to, to have, uh, you know, a, a better uh, throughput through the intersections. And I wonder if you could just kind of touch on yeah. some of the possibilities of how that's done. Well, let me, t let me, let me address both points because I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm aware of, of your concern uh, for the municipal buildings and obviously in that capacity. Um, and I was here uh, at a select board meeting with our, our now District Highway Director, Rich Massey, who uh, committed to ensuring that the, the construction monitoring and uh, vibration monitoring and, and uh, pre and post or pre and the pre-construction condition and during construction was uh, something that we were keeping an eye on and, and ensuring our contractor was complying with specifications that were entered into that contract. So uh, that uh, was definitely a concern we heard loud and clear and, and incorporated you know, all those, those uh, specifications to deal with that um, actively during the construction and before construction starts. Because um, you're right, they're very close, and heavy construction equipment that close to a historic building, I can see why anyone would be concerned about it. That's totally on the record, and uh, we agree. Um, regarding BRT versus BRT light, you know, I, I'm, I'll be I'll be honest. We don't really have a lot of faith that um, that de full dedicated space along the entire corridor is going to be feasible. But that being said, that's my personal opinion, and I'm leaving it up to the team to do a, a, a unbiased uh, analysis of that because that's just, you know, me, I don't know. Um, but we're gonna look at that. We're gonna go through a very comprehensive modeling uh, and uh, traffic analysis to inform how those alternatives are developed. So, you know, we're, we have a, a, a range of alternatives working with uh, PBTA as our, as our, our, our primary part, project partner, looking at that range from full dedicated space down to something that just resembles um, key improvements. But we think that there's a hybrid version of that in specific locations throughout the corridor where those key improvements can be made to get closer to a bus rapid transit-like facility that, you know, like we said, I think there's an opportunity to, to really implement some, some dramatic improvements that could significantly increase the, uh, the overall favorability of taking the B43. Thank you. Did, is, is that... Good. That, that was very good. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Hi, Jerry Devine. I'm on the Board of Selectmen here. I'm a little concerned regarding the um, uh, B43 buses to make sure that they're going to be making enough stops in the town of Hadley as well. We don't want to be just a throughway where you start at point A and get to point B and there's not a lot of stops in between. There's a lot of people in the town of Hadley, 29% to be exact, that work at UMass and there's a lot of students at UMass. So we want to have the opportunities to get on the buses and to get to, to the sites both north and or east and west as well. 
So we just want to make sure that their stops are not forgotten and that the buses don't fill up at one point and not be able to pick up in between on the long, along the way. Yeah, that's a great point. And uh, one of the things that we've been looking at, and, and this, is, this is all the, the great stuff that PVTA has done and is starting to inform some of you know, how we guide our project's development, is uh, they have a lot of data. Uh, you know, thank you, Josh, uh, for conducting that work. It was uh, a very notable analysis that um, they have a lot of data about where the riders are, are, are getting on, where they're getting off, you know, the time of day, all of that. And, um, you know, we will be looking at maybe consolidating stops that, based on those, that data, we know are really not serving a lot of folks and could balance that with, with the key improvements. But by no means do we, do we envision just flying through Hadley. You know, there's there's a lot of there's a there's a heavy movement there, and it's something that that we're 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 keenly aware of. Optimistically, we hope this is going to be much more successful, and more people will be utilizing it that currently use it today. So, thank you. Great, great. Thanks a lot. Hi, I'm uh, Bill Dwyer from the Hadley Planning Board, um, and it's more a comment than a question. I just wanted to reiterate in this forum uh, what we have discussed before. Uh, the planning board is a leading indicator of economic recovery. We're getting permitting in now pretty much, we have applications pretty much the length of Route 9 in Hadley. And as we are going through them, I am trying to direct the contractors or the developers to be in touch with you, mm -hmm. but they're not going to wait and we don't have a construction moratorium. And uh, so- Where would I propose one? Yeah. I am. Uh, I just want to uh, ask that as you get as much detail out there as soon as you can, uh, perhaps even earlier than you would otherwise be obliged to, just because we have people making decisions based on not a lot of information at this point, except something's coming, we don't know what. So we will certainly appreciate the cooperation because otherwise we have to reopen the public hearings and redo the site plans right. and uh, we'd rather avoid that. Yeah, we'd rather not waste your time too, Bill. Thank you for the comment. It's, it's something you've raised before and, and definitely is, is a concern because we don't want to, you know, as a matter of process, we wouldn't want to start telling uh, property owners, no, you can't do this, you can't do that. When in reality, you know, we don't have any rights to, to say so. It's it's uh, there's a vision, um, but there isn't details yet. And so we'll we'll continue to work with 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 you and the planning board to make sure that we don't cause you to have to duplicate your efforts. But we're in that gray zone right now where we're we're kind of just getting started and trying to figure out what we're going to do. I mean, ultimately, the footprint of Route Nine could go from 12 to you know 30 feet. We, we and we just don't know where or when and how. So. Uh, but it's a good point, it's a good concern to raise. Thank you. Hi, Andy Klopacki, a uh, Hadley resident and uh, frequent user of Route 9 as well as the rail trail. First of all, we appreciate the efforts to um, uh, reinvest in the rail trail as well as the projects that you're doing here, which um, to me obviously uh, appears to be uh, strengthening the, uh, the pipeline between Amherst and Northampton in which people are tra traveling through Hadley. Um, but, in, in the, you know, years ago there was efforts to widen the bridge back to four lanes as it was at some point. But I guess my question, being a user of the road, I noticed that there are two significant stumbling blocks to the throughput and uh, wondering how it's incorporated in your project. First of all, being the light at the other end of the bridge. Um, we, uh, people who travel Route 9 will know that at 3.30 to 5.30, that tra traffic can be backed up sometimes back to the mall on a heavy sc school let out weekend. Um, so that's a, a significant one. And, and a part that, and parcel to that is the new light over at the Damon Road Industrial Park, which has also caused, whoop, caused Damon Road to back up. Uh, significantly as well actually used to be able to kind of dive off that but I see that as an essential part in helping the throughput because all you've done so far is I don't mean to be flippant but add parking capacity because that road backs up to that light and yeah we've observed that actually you know I mean I think the district is aware of, of some of the issues there and uh, there was another project that was going on at some point which um, I don't know I haven't seen progress on it in quite some time but 
they had a number of different scenarios which they were working on, but to me, in order to, again, to improve throughput, you've got to fix the valve at the end of the pipe. Thank you. I think that's a good point. Je um, Jeff or, or Paula, do you guys have, uh, not to put you on the spot, but I'm, I, I guess I am. Um, I know we, we do have a project on the books for the, at the interchange, is that correct? Just not. Yes. The roundabout. Yeah. Could you just say a quick word about it? Because I mean, I think it's important. Um, that, that's a completely separate project, and we, we go through a very, diff, uh, very separate process for all that. But just to give the folks a quick update on that, Jeff. Sure, I'm uh, Jeff Hanoski. I work in the district office here in Mass. Northampton. Uh, the projects you're talking about at the other end, where the light is, there's actually a project that's got due to be out for advertising in 2018. It's on the tip. They're actually going to be installing a roundabout, a two-lane roundabout on the other side of the bridge. And additionally, there's another project, I believe it's an 18 also, or you know, 17, is there, there's a project to try and redo Damon Road. There'll be improvements to that, to that road too. A lot of the problems with the, you know, the signal at the industrial park has to do with you know, the new train traffic and stuff. So we're doing the best we can to try to work that out and ease it. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Thanks for, uh, for uh, honoring my request. I, I, hate to, I hate to do that, but I, I knew you knew. So thank you. Hi, Dick Kozowski, Northampton, daily user of Route 9. I'd like to re reiterate what the previous poker speaker said about the lights and the traffic at the far end of the, of the uh, corridor. In this day and age of computers and all those cameras monitoring traffic on the highway, it seems as though the lights could somehow be interconnected so that when the traffic is high, there's not this time signal process that we currently have. You know, you go to some western states and you can sit in an intersection for three minutes during, during busy hours because the traffic on the throughway is very heavy and the side streets are not. So I'm just hoping that uh, smart lights are possible. If well, that's, uh, that's, that's it sounds like there's a there is a there's a project on, that we're on the books to deal with that. That sounds like we're going to designalize, so and install a roundabout. So continue to look at that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Becky Shannon from uh, Northampton, and you've talked a lot. Well, you've certainly identified all the problems that we have with Route 9. Um, but it, it seems as though your concentration was up near the shopping centers. And I would just hope that you have more crossing, pedestrian crossings um, on Route 9, um, closer to the bridge area um, as well. Because right now, to get from one, like around West Street, to get from one side of the street to the other, you risk your life. Um, it's really very difficult to cross to get to Esalon, for example, from the bike trail. Um, it, it, crossing is just very difficult and because there is no stoplight and you just have to wait for the traffic to be done on both, both coming and going and it's hard to cross, so thank okay. you. Okay, well thank you for the input. I mean, you know, I think that uh, so the reason why, let me just reiterate this, the reason why we've, we are focused on, on the area with the, near the shopping center from the town center is because that's, that's where the bottleneck still exists. So that's our, our key focus for um, implementing a, a project for construction. Uh, I think working with the district, we can identify some of those key hazard zones for, for crossing and maybe be able to come up with some short-term improvements that are cost-effective in the form of paint or uh, signal timing changes or signal tweaks that, you know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to commit to anything on their behalf, but that's certainly something we can uh, we can continue to look at because you know clearly it is it's a big it's a big long road, and and I'm here to focus on on this one section in terms of uh, a construction project. But I, I do appreciate you bringing that to our attention. Hi, I'm Ava, and I live in Northampton. Well, now I live in Northampton. I can, but I'm sure. Yeah, I think you can just twist the mic down a bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, that there works. you go. Um, I estimate that I spend maybe uh, close to a month of my life every year on the B43. And I used to live at that intersection across from Esalon. And um, I actually used to walk down to Middle Street because there's a pedestrian light there in order to cross to catch the bus, even though there is a bus stop at West Street, but can't get to it safely in both directions. Um, and I really want to underscore, just to make a comment about the ADA issues, 
For example, this morning I was on the 8 o'clock B43 and there's a wheelchair user who gets off at the mall. And the new cutout at the mall is great, but the bus doesn't go down, down to the mall on the early morning buses because the businesses aren't open yet. But so I just wonder when this person gets off the bus, how are they getting to where they're going? It's terrifying, especially in the winter with the snow banks. And I, I, I didn't read the minutes from your last meeting, um, so I don't know who's in your stakeholder group, but I wonder if you have any one from, um, from the mall um, pyramid group. Um, you know, and I know that's outside your jurisdiction, but whatever connections you can make to business owners, because people, it's great if you have a good bus stop, but you get off the bus stop and then you can't get to where you need to do your shopping, or you can't get from the shopping across the mall to catch the bus on the reverse, on the inbound. It's of minimal helpfulness, and I recognize that the, the highway itself is your responsibility. But connectivity, with the bicycle issues, I'm sure you see this too, is it, very important. Of course, no, of course, and, and you're right. I mean, I, I, I will reiterate, frankly, what you said. I, you know, we don't have jurisdiction over private property, um, but as, as part of the overall analysis of the B43, I think that some of those issues may start to, to flesh out, and we can work with PBTA to identify some key priorities for, uh, for how to accommodate all users. And, and you know, I think but those are, that's done very differently, you know, in terms of the, the PBTA operates the B43, and, you know, if they're entering and exiting private property, those are all done through either easements or agreements or some other uh, legal instrument that allows those buses to be there. And I'm not going to speak on behalf of PBTA, but, um, you know, that is outside of our jurisdiction, but I think uh, for every other, you know, um, so, and I'm not actually, I, I'm glad you brought it up. I'm going to go take a look at, at that stop because uh, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't seen it. It's um, just one example of many, many right, right, right. similar and examples. You're right. And, uh, but everything within, you know, all of the, the stops within this part of the corridor, you know, they would be fully accessible. They will be fully accessible. They'll have curb cuts and, and you know, any, any um, or ramps at any of the crossings that we, we build or rebuild, um, accessible sidewalks, all of that meet ADA standards. But I think that's a really good point. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's an easy thing to forget when, when you're mobile. Um, I've broken my foot a couple times, and well, my foot and one, one and ankle, and you quickly realize how hard it is to get around when you know you don't you don't have that full mobility of your your own you know your two feet. I was on a little scooter for a while, and I quickly realized how inaccessible sidewalks are just about everywhere. So thank you for bringing it up. Um, Michelle Morris Friedman from Hadley. I wanted to speak to the same issue of pedestrian access. Um, just to mention, have any studies been done about where people actually cross? Just to mention, there are a few other places too. I've seen a lot of people cross around um, the sun rays printing over to Whole Foods, and it's out of the purview of this thing, but around the stop and shop plaza, there are people who will cross in that area very n not safe, and the enlarged intersection at Maple Street is pretty much impossible to cross by right. foot, but I have seen people do it. Um, so I, I think, you know, one thing you might want to consider is tracking, you know, um, I mean, it'll be very hard to do, I imagine, because it's not something that happens all the time, where people maybe do surveys actually cross, mm -hmm. often in a very dangerous way. Yeah, I think that would be influenced. It's a good idea. But I think it's going to be influenced by what's there, and you know, um, you know, like if, if if it is dangerous to cross in one place or another. Um, yeah, I think that mic is off. There you go. Bad connection. Good, but it's a great point. Um, I'm not sure what we'll be doing to do that, but um, you know, in terms of actual counts, but certainly there's a lot we can get from uh, from hearing from from folks who who use the roadway every day. Hi, I'm I'm Dan Regish. Uh, lifelong Hadley resident. Um, I'd like to thank you for giving the community an opportunity to bring their comments to you. Um, one of the concerns that I have that uh, is probably a small beans issue, uh, but it is an issue, is we have a, a local snowmobile club that has grown to uh, more than a, you know, well over a hundred members now. Um, and you know, I'm sure anybody here who's been farther out toward Williamsburg and out to the hill towns has seen the diamond-shaped signs with a snowmobile on them. Mm -hmm. Those are legal snowmobile crossings. Those signs are provided by the DOT 
And we have a crossing on Route 9, and the only place we can cross legally is where it's only two lanes. And when, the, when, it, when it widens to, to three or four lanes, we cannot legally cross anymore. Okay. We, we, maybe we only have 100, 130 members, but there's got to be more than five, 600 crossings a season on that one little piece. And, um, we, you know, we, we would enter entertain the idea of using the tunnel during the winter and in exchange for grooming that. We, did, uh, we, we do have uh, equipment provided by DCR to groom our trails. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, again, it's probably a small beans issue but no, not necessarily. Where, where is the, the, the crossing now? Uh, it's just east of East Street. East of East Street. Okay, where so the somewhere in, in um, where is East Street? Right about here, right? Yeah. So, okay, well, well, we'll find it. And I think that, you know, I, that's kind of neat. You know, you bring up a, a, we don't really see a lot of these in, in our urban design projects. Right. It's, you know? a, it's a pretty tight community. And, and, but, uh, but I wouldn't, don't worry about your numbers. I mean, just because there's not a thousand of you doesn't mean that you're not important. So, um, well, party of the association, which there are thousands. And, yeah, the and, it, right. and a lot of people from the other clubs use this trail. It's a major trail that goes yeah. from Sunderland to the, to the Summit House. Okay. Um, it's We're not going to leave it stranded, and I think that um, using the, the tunnel is is an interesting alternative. But I know, as soon as we say something like that, you know, it's it's a balance of, you know, how does the Norwatic operate all year long, and um, you know, I think that we can accommodate. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of treatments that we could we could look at for providing a safe accommodation at grade uh, across Route Nine. Um, I don't know that these ever been used for a, for a snowmobile, but uh, for pedestrians in non-signalized situations, we have um, things like uh, there are a couple newer technologies. Uh, they're not really like breakthroughs or anything, but uh, rapid uh, flashing yellow beacons that are activated by um, you know with lasers. You know, you're a snow if you're on your snowmobile and you approach, just by the virtue of you being there. Uh, would activate that that beacon and there's uh, another approach that um, in the more urban environments uh, they're called hawk signals and they're they're actuated to turn red only when those users are there and otherwise they don't disrupt the flow of our traffic. little club would be happy with just the diamond signs well that's even easier and a lot cheaper <laughs> but uh you know i think that's that's definitely it's a great point to raise i mean it's it right now we're nowhere near designing what that crossing would look like but the fact that we even, you know, we didn't, I don't think we knew it was there. So that's great. We'll go find it and, and keep it on in, 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 in our planning. But it sounds like you, you've uh, addressed any of my other concerns as far as uh, cutouts for the buses and the bus stops are important. I do maintain some commercial property uh, mm -hmm. and it, the, where the bus stops there, there, there is no place. There's no cutout for them to pull over. And yeah, and we've got to look at whether or not it makes sense for them to be pulling off the road. Does that improve the operation? Does it make it more difficult for them to get back on? You know, where does it go? Does it, is it before or after the signal? Those are all things we've got to, we've got to study. Like I said, we, we came here just to introduce this, so um, we're just getting started. But thanks a lot for your, for your input. Thanks so much. Hi, I'm Susan Norris. I live in Hadley. I um, drive on Route 9 all the time, in both directions, going to either Northampton or Amherst. And coming across the bridge and going east in the east direction, I'm terrified that in front of me somebody wants to make a left turn on West Street. And there are more and more people that want to do this. They want to make that left turn, and there's a lot of traffic coming toward you. And people are waiting there. I'm, sometimes I wait there because I'm in, in that lane. I'm waiting there for five minutes, and it's an accident waiting to happen. Somebody's just going to, you know hit you, just not see you in front of you. And it's, that's, it goes all the way through, all the way over to um, North Maple Street. Mm -hmm. um, if people want to turn into Stables, that restaurant, or they want to go into Valley Vet, and they want to make a left turn, it's the same thing. It's that you just can't do it, and, and it's an accident. It's going to happen, and it has happened. Sure and it the has. same it's true in the opposite direction. If you're coming, if you're going westward, um, trying to make a left turn, if it's in Sam's, at Sam's store, or any of the others, I'm just wondering what is going to be done, even in that corridor that you're planning. What what do you do about that? Well, we take a modern approach to engineering the roadway. 
um, and with all of the national practices and standards that address those sorts of things. Um, you know, you, you have an extra lane, you mean, making that left turn? Perhaps, uh, you know, where, where, Sorry, where uh, you know, what we do, uh, part of the process for, uh, thank you, Richard. Part of the process for you know going through a project development process and engineering roadway improvements is looking at you know where where are the heavier movements how should lanes to be dedicated how do you uh, engineer the signals such that you know you give time for those movements that really need that that individual yeah like for instance the cross path road down, just after the bridge finally that was fixed with a no left turn there that's great and even though people do do it but not many people do it and i certainly don't do it now but that was fixed. But you're you know, to take the jug handle, right? Yeah, but um, but the West Street is is very bad, very mm -hmm. very bad there, and then all the way down. So I hope this is addressed. And I don't know how. I mean, I don't. We, we will. We will address. I mean, you know, we we're not going to put something that's less safe back in its place. So all right, thank you for the input. But you 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 know, you've driven home a point that we we were trying to get across. We recognize that there's there's existing safety issues on the on the road, and you know, our project will address them. Hi, hi, my name is Alan Weinberg. I'm a resident of Hadley. I'm also a trustee for the Goodwin Memorial Library. Uh, as a resident, I'm glad to hear that you're talking about more bike connections to the bike paths and also sidewalks, um, and particularly up here near the malls. I think the lack of sidewalks and bike connections is a real problem there. So I'm glad to hear that that's on the, on the table. As far as the library goes and my role as a trustee, I'm mainly concerned about you know the effects of the road, road work widening or whatever you have in mind at the intersection of Middle Street that might affect both structurally, as David mentioned, the buildings, but also aesthetically. And I have a question, which is, it's already four lanes at that point, right. a little bit to the east. So I, I'm wondering, are you still thinking about further widening of, of the Not uh, beyond Middle Street, no. So maybe something like bus cutouts or something like that might be in the picture. Yes. I mean, all, there's also a sidewalk there as well. Yes. You know, we don't need a sidewalk. I can see a bus cutout, but I would hope that somewhere in that center that we'd look really high before we put one in front of the library because that would bring the street right, right up to the front door. Um, although it would, functionally, it would make sense. But um, I'm hoping that there's another alternative to additional bus cutouts or uh, impacts, you know, that would be somewhere else other than in front yep. of the library. Okay. Well, like I said, like I've been saying all night, right now we're on, we have a clean slate. So that, that's something that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great input for us so that we have that in, in our, you know, in our minds as, as a constraint. So, but, uh, you know, in terms of how we accommodate bus stops, we really don't, we don't know how we're going to do it yet. We got to evaluate different design treatments and then, you know, analyze that as an alternative. Thanks for the input. Go ahead. I just had a question. You mentioned, I'm, I, I'm Wendy Robinson, I live in Northampton. You mentioned alternatives to Route 9. Mm -hmm. Can you say a little more about that? Sure. Uh, I, I, was a bit, I was a bit vague about that, wasn't I? Um, so one of the, one of the, the key themes to uh, environmental review and permitting is avoid, minimize, and mitigate environmental impacts. And you do it in that order. And one of the things we're trying to address with the Route 9 corridor's mobility is, as, as all roadways are, more cars fit with more pavement, right? I mean, that's the traditional mentality. Um, what we're trying to accomplish here is fit more people and minimize how much pavement we have to, to lay down on the ground. The alternatives that we're looking at, most notably there's the section where the actual, you know, the number of lanes, the width of the roadway, where that, we, have an we may have an opportunity to limit that. Um, and we've, we've, we've really got to analyze this. This is about balancing the, the long-term need versus the short-term uh, cost and impact. Uh, looking at uh, alternatives that, rather than just that two and two lane type design where you may have, you have a lot of driveways in, in the section between Middle Street and uh, to Lowe's. You have a lot of turning movements. You know, we heard um, just a moment ago about the, the, the hazards associated with left turns across two lanes of traffic. And one of the alternatives we're gonna analyze uh, for, the, for Route 9 in that section of the corridor is uh, one lane in each direction, one general travel lane, and one center turning lane. And it's right at the threshold of, uh, of the, the daily 
volume and the peak volumes, which are kind of hard to figure out what those are. So the peak, the, the rush hour kind of seems to move around every day, as I'm sure you guys all know. Other than the, five, the 3 to 5.30 trying to get it in Northampton, that seems to be pretty consistent. But uh, that's one of the alternatives. So it would be a three-lane cross-section with one travel lane in one direction, a center turning lane in, uh, uh, through, through that, that section of the segment of the corridor, and then another travel lane in the other direction. And uh, you know, we're also looking at, uh, right now, MassDOT has a healthy transportation policy directive that requires us to uh, provide sidewalks on both sides of the road, provide bus, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, bike accommodation in the form of uh, the minimum accommodations, a five foot uh, shoulder. Uh, there's, when I talk about alternatives, I talk, I'm talking about not only the alternatives for the lane assignments and the width of the roadway for cars, but also the, al the alternatives for how we accommodate pedestrians in terms of the number of sidewalks, the width of the sidewalks, and where we put bikes. Is it on the road in a, in a, in a shoulder? Is it in a buffered bike lane with, a, with some painted separation? Is it physically separated? Is it, you know, all these different uh, alternatives, those are all the things we're starting to, to um, think about and then we'll eventually start to analyze and conceptualize. Hi, I'm Linda Ziegenbein. I'm a resident of Hadley. I'm also a member of the Historical Commission and I think I can speak for us um, and say that we are very grateful um, for your responsiveness, for our concerns, specifically about the road widening in front of the library. Yes, thank you, Linda. Um, in the historic area. Um, I also am a parent uh, at the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School, and that's an area that I think um, needs some attention as you look at traffic patterns, because the school, when it's full, is going to have 500 students from kindergarten to 12th grade, and already there's a lot of traffic during school drop-off and um, at the end of the day, I've been rear-ended twice going into um, the school parking lot on Route 9, and so I think it's going, as the school grows, it's just going to get worse. And there are um, children who walk to school along Route 9, my family bikes to school from our house in Hadley, and so these are all things um, Where's the hope, school again exactly? I'm sorry. I it's right on Route 9. It is, um, it's right next to... It's right next to Subaru. It's right next to the Steve Lewis Subaru. I'll admit, I'm gonna come clean. I'm still kind it's, of okay. Here. It's between Steve Lewis Subaru and um, Marshalls. Okay. Yeah, it's a really big building that just came up. Okay. I've been out here about five or six times with the intent of looking, you know, in the corridor. So yeah, well, excuse I, my my amateur. Uh, no, and I realize that probably people who are coming aren't showing up at 8.15 in the morning and at 3.30 or 4.15 when school's letting out, um, okay. because then by the time people are leaving at 5, it's cleared out, but it gets really bad around those okay. times. We'll take a look at it. Yeah. We'll keep it in mind. And also, uh, Jeff Shrimpton says hello. <laughs> he, uh, he stopped by my desk today and, and, and said, oh, you're going to Hadley. You know, you know I, I, I know them well. So he, sent, he wanted to send a, a, a little greeting. But thank you. Hi, Andy Klepak again. This is a, um, a quick reference to a resource. I appreciate you guys having the public forum. Um, there was a, a master plan that was put together, and I believe it's still accessible from the town website underneath the planning department, which... Okay, so you've We've reviewed that. Yep. Yeah, okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, okay. and, and let me just point out why. You know, we recognize that Route 9 is serving many different functions, and right now underserving. Um, in, the, in the bottleneck section, many different functions, you know, not only from a modal perspective, but from a, an overall, uh, you know, regional land use and, you know, social perspective that uh, Route 9 acts as that main, uh, we've heard vein, you know, uh, the artery for connections between Northampton and, you know, as a cultural center and Amherst um, and, and UMass, obviously, and the other, and the other, and the, and the other colleges in the area. Um, as academic centers, but also we're very aware, and as you know, the, uh, your your planning board has mentioned tonight, um, that this is the economic development zone for for Hadley, and in the master plan, it's it's laid out very clearly that way. And we want to make sure that our long range, the you know, our medium term fix serves that long range purpose for promoting and continuing to foster the economic development along Route Nine. But, Thanks for pointing it out, and we've, we've been reviewing it and uh, doing some of that as part of our homework. Well, certainly, and part of the um, 
the report emphasizes that not only is it the economic growth, but the, you know, the area between West Street and particularly the intersection with Middle uh, along out to East Street is the historic center of town. Mm -hmm. And um, it, you know, it, it actually has, as you know, this, the overlay district that applies to that area. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it does, you know, how, I'm sure you have to balance uh, the throughput versus uh, maintaining the historic uh, preservation of the town, the center of the town. That Absolutely. Uh, all right, thank you. Thank you. It's one of the last agricultural centers left in our state. Of course, we'd want to preserve it. Thanks. Uh, David Tudorin again. Uh, just to reiterate what Andy said, uh, uh, West Street to Middle Street includes uh, our public high school, a coffee shop, a donut shop, a courthouse, a church, and many other assets to our public. Uh, I would encourage you uh, to explore uh, your your project limits a little bit farther westward to Middle Street to, to look at that. I mean, I know we have, we have uh, sidewalks along that area, but our children walk along those sidewalks to Cumberland Farms for, you know, sodas and things like that. Uh, we actually shut down uh, Route 9 once a year for a parade. We completely shut it down. And I think we all kind of like that because we can sort of uh, put our foot down for traffic. But uh, it is an important aspect to our, to our community. And, and I think that uh, it, it is the community center. Uh, Route 9 goes through it, and I think we find that unfortunate sometimes. But if we could improve uh, that, that portion of the corridor so that it's more livable for our own community, I think that would really be important. And I think also um, considering the, um, if, you, if you want to call it maybe a bleeder valve of West Street to North Lane to Middle Street to Rocky Hill Road as a, as a, a place where a lot of people go through to try and avoid mm -hmm. the traffic, but it does cause that very serious uh, uh, left turn uh, at Middle Street. I think it's, it's very dangerous, and I, I, would, I would consider maybe uh, asking you to look at no left turns in that area so that there is no traffic backing up in the, in the easterly direction. But, uh, it, you know, it, it goes through our, our historic community. West Street is the origin of this town. And I think it's rather unfortunate that it becomes somewhat of an interchange during traffic hours. Thank you. Okay, thanks, thanks for the comments on that. It's good input. Hi, Richard Gazowski again. Uh, I'm glad to see you're accommodating pedestrians and their considerations and all this. But we do have a phenomenon in this part of the world called winter. And winter often means snow or slush. And a state highway with three or four lanes can end up piling a huge amount of snow on a sidewalk if it's not set Properly back from maintained. the road. Right. And I've noticed that we do have a sidewalk over the bridge now and leading down from the bridge toward Hadley. But in the wintertime, the state ceases maintenance of that sidewalk. So it essentially becomes inoperable. So I don't know whether this is a maintenance issue for the state. Does the state maintain sidewalks along state highways? Are property owners responsible? which is almost impossible with a four-foot snowbank on your sidewalk. Right. And are we just write off pedestrians for the winter? You've hit on a very important issue that uh, I will continue to work with the district to address, but uh, you know, we've, we've heard that from other local officials uh, you know, right here in, in this room tonight, uh, too, too, not too notably raising their hands in the corner. Um, uh, you know, we know it's a problem, and we like, Guys like me come into and, and say, hey, isn't this great? We're going to give you sidewalks. And then we walk away and they get built. And you know, we don't necessarily have all the resources we need either to, uh, to maintain those in a, in a four season capacity. I think it's a problem that we have statewide. You know, I, we see it all the time. So I don't have an, an answer for you yet tonight, but I hear you. Yeah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> but, I, I, I hear you, and, uh, and we've been talking with, uh, with the district about it and trying to figure out a way to you know, make sure that they have the equipment and staff that they need to be able to address that. Thank you. Uh, Andy Morris Friedman again. Uh, if everybody's going for, up for seconds, I think I might also. Um, just quickly on the winter sidewalk issue, um, it is too bad we can't use our sidewalks, <coughs> excuse me, in the winter. Uh, because there's no money to plow them. But I don't think that's a reason not to put in the sidewalks just because we can't use them in the winter. Um, hopefully that uh, money will become available and we'll be walking all year round. 
Um, my question is, uh, some people believe that road widening doesn't work. And that if you made the roads wider, you just get more traffic. Mm -hmm. And it's an escalating snowball to hell. It's the, it is the paradox. Yeah, could you address that? Um, why you don't think that, why you don't think this work will make things worse? Well, that's a great question. And, and I'm actually working on other projects in, in part of the state where we're reducing roadway capacity and inducing congestion. And for MassDOT, that is like, it's, it's like a, a double bacon cheeseburger for someone who had a heart attack the week before. It's, it, it, it blows people away. But we're trying to be more progressive in our approach to these things and managing mobility in a way that doesn't just serve a single occupant vehicle. I think in this particular case, because Route 9 does serve such a major uh, uh, regional function that, and that there is an existing, a serious existing um, congestion issue, that in the medium term, where our plan will address that congestion, but it won't necessarily address the long-term standard growth projection that a lot of, you know, for the last 50 years uh, has been the standard practice and, and approach for, for uh, highway engineers. And that's why the transit study and improvements to the B43 we think are such a key part of how to make the long-term mobility work because if you're not providing an alternative form of transportation for, for users, then they are gonna just continue to drive. And it's about making, taking the bus more convenient than getting in your car, especially for you know, students moving from, from the campus to Northampton. If for every single one of those students that we can get out of their cars, that it's more convenient to hop on the bus because you see a sign that says it's two minutes away than walking the 10 minutes to your car in that far off parking lot, and I mean, that's one example of, of the shift that we could, we could promote. But that's the overall philosophy. Because you're right, ultimately more capacity means it's easier to drive and there's, there's more, more people who are gonna use it. That's been, that is the, the paradox that highway engineers have faced for decades and I think are just finally coming to realize is actually like, it's not just a myth, it's true. Wider highways don't mean better highways, and it's about managing the overall uh, transportation demand rather than just putting more roadway out there. You know, go to California. They've got some of the worst congestion in the world and, and the biggest highways. So we know, we're with you, but I think, um, you know, we're with you on the thinking. But I think in this case, the congestion is so severe that not addressing it with, a, with widening just serves every user, in, in our opinion. But thanks for bringing that up because it's a it's a new way of thinking for us, uh, especially you know um, in the highway department. So we're masked off though now. We're, it's 2015. We're trying to respond to that. Um, Rosalie Weinberg, 108 Bay Road, Hadley resident. Um, I'm concerned about the part of Route 9 from Maple Street to University Drive that there's no sidewalks on either side there. And there's hotels, and there's restaurants, and shops, and there's no way for people to walk from a hotel to a restaurant or, or mm -hmm. anywhere. You basically have to hop in a car and drive because there's no way to walk. I've climbed over guardrails myself, actually, going, <laughs> right? staying, and at, staying at one of the hotels and going over to, uh, to the other side of the street after a, a, a really fun wedding but in Sunderland. But, uh, you know, luckily it was late. There wasn't as much traffic. But, yeah, yeah I, I agreed. Agreed. I'm and sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, that's all right. And then... The buses, I don't know where the bus stops are. I've seen people standing on top of snow banks to get the bus. I've seen people walking, you know, when it's winter and the snow is piled up, I've seen people with a shopping cart pushing it down Route 9 because there's no sidewalk. And I've seen, um, just last week I saw someone crossing at Maple Street. Um, they were coming across from Home Depot and there was no sidewalk there or crosswalk. But they came, were coming across the grass with a baby carriage, and then they were going to, you know, cross Route 9. They crossed Route 9 there with, I don't, even, I don't know if there is a crosswalk there, but it, it just right. isn't very safe. And they only, from that point to all the way to where Stop and Shop is, there's no crosswalks. It's just, if you want to cross the street, you practically have to go to Amherst to cross and to the yeah. other side. And those are definitely all issues we want to, we want to fix.
Anybody else? No? Well, we scheduled a little longer. This is great. We like to finish early. Um, I really appreciate uh, you know all the all the comments from everybody. I think um, it sounds like we're all on, on on pretty closely on the same page. You know, you we we came here thinking there that there were a lot there were a lot of issues. I you know the snowmobile that's a new one. Um, that's that's neat. You know, so um, we uh, we'll probably uh, we're going to continue. We're going to go back, continue doing our homework, start digging into our analysis and, and, and getting into the transit study and working with our stakeholders. Um, you know, like I said, um, as Nick would tell you a hundred times, if you want to get email updates from us, uh, sign in at the back of the room if you didn't already. Um, if you, uh, no one, I don't know why we still, why anyone, why we do this. It, it feels like we just have to. But when this gets posted, you could click here and go to our website um, or just Google Route 9 corridor improvement or whatever, your search engine of your choice. Um, I don't know, is Microsoft listening? Um, but, uh, you know, so we'll be posting this, this presentation and the detailed minutes that Nick has been furiously recording for us uh, about the dialogue that we've had here. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if you do sign up for, for, for those updates, we'll let you know when the next time we'll be coming back out in this, in this format and possibly in, in different formats to get a little more collaboratively engaged and, and start to bring some of the outcome of our work. But otherwise, thank you all so much and have a great night.